Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you thanks today, Lord. We bless your holy name, Father. We lift up your name because you are good. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we will never cease, O oh God, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory, because you deserve it. Lord, today, even as we have gathered for this devotion, O oh God, that has been ordained by you, I pray, Father, that you would teach us today, that you would speak to our hearts today, cause us, O oh God, to open our hearts so that you can speak to us, so that you can teach us, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you would bless each person that's gathered, that's listening today. And I pray, O oh God, that something that is said today will reach them to the point of transformation, to the point of change, lasting change, O oh God. Because it's always our desire, Lord, to live lives that are pleasing unto you. So, Lord, today we ask you to be with us. Be with us, Father. Take charge of the airwaves and cause your word to go forth with power, with anointing, and with clarity. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, friends. Good morning. This is Diane. And I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you with a word from the word of God. And it is always my hope that you would be blessed, you would be uplifted, you would be encouraged, you would be strengthened in your inner man and just strengthened, you know, generally speaking. Because listen, <laughs> there is so much you know, that comes against us at times in life, things that discourage us, things that cause us to feel as if that's it. I don't want to go on. I don't want to do this Christian walk thing anymore. It's just too hard. It's too challenging. There are too many problems, too many people, you know, to deal with where relationships are not going right. You have heard me say this, friends, all the time, and I will continue to say it because it's the truth. A lot of us would be fine, you know, if we didn't have, you know, people to deal with. Some of us, that's what we think anyway. But as soon as we come into relationship with others, look out for problems, look out for trouble. But, you know, the thing is, the Lord is teaching us in his word that love is the key love is the answer because when we love friends when we love one another when we love others when we love ourselves even you know we're able to reach out to others some say i love god but i don't love people that can't be right because our bible teaches us that if we say we love god we should at least have love for those that we can see because we can't see God all right so whenever we're tempted to just throw in the towel and give up on people and give up on everything just remember that is because of the love that God has for us which has been shed abroad in our hearts that we're able to extend you know that measure of love towards others today We'll be talking about godly confidence versus pride and arrogance. This is important for us to look at because we see extremes, you know, we see extremes in our relationships, in our interactions, where you would see somebody who seems so humble, right? You wonder if they have sense, you know, I'm, I'm just going to put it out there like that. And then you see another one on the other side of the spectrum where they are so arrogant, right? They're full of themselves, full of themselves. You know, they are just overly confident. I mean, it's good to have confidence and we're going to talk about that. It's good to have confidence, but our confidence should not be in and of ourselves just like that. It has to be 
in a power that is greater than ourselves. And of course, we know we're talking about God Almighty. All right, the Lord. Today, we're going to look at a few verses and just to look at this whole thing, godly confidence versus pride and arrogance. You see, when you are confident in God, sometimes that can be mistaken for arrogance because there are people who do not understand you know, even those who came from that low self-esteem, who the Lord had to build, the Lord had to, you know, pull, pull, pull them out of that place. That place sometimes where others would have shoved them, would have pushed them, kicked them to the curb and say, you're a nobody. You know, you are not worth anything. You will never amount to anything. For some people that started from their childhood days. You know, this type of negativity being thrown at them. So they grow up with this feeling of inadequacy. And sometimes that's a very terrible thing. Not sometimes, all the time, because it causes problems in their lives. Because you see, as much as pride and arrogance is screaming, look at me, look at me, I'm the greatest, that low self-esteem, may also be an indication that the person is also seeking attention. It may not appear that way at the onset, but if you really check, sometimes those with very low self-esteem, they're saying, I need help. It's like they're screaming out for help as well. So in both scenarios, you know, both are screaming, look at me, but for different reasons. You understand? So let's look at this verse here uh, James 4 and 6 and it says but he gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble and we have read that before we have read that more than once and we say you know <laughs> God resists the proud you know those people who are overly confident as a matter of fact when you look in the dictionary or different uh, definitions are out there but the one that I am focusing on is that feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction from one's own one's own achievements or even the achievements of those with whom they are closely associated now that being proud about you know your accomplishments and so on that's one thing but it's when some take it to the extreme it's when you know well these are my accomplishments and you know until you're able to come up to my level you're a nobody so you have that kind of pride that kind of arrogance that sets in like i see myself as the greatest you know nobody can compare to me and we see that sometimes in our friends around us the people we associate with and sometimes we say to ourselves look at them acting as if you know they're a little god and sometimes we say you know they're like a little demigod because of their behavior it's like nobody is greater than i am and i'll i'll, I'll just throw this in here one time i had a conversation with a pastor and he basically was saying that when he looks around him, when he looks around the community, he sees nobody that's greater than him in terms of, you know, who he <laughs> believes he is, you know. And I was so appalled by that because it showed that apart from having a healthy dose of pride, you know, where you have a good, good self-esteem, it went beyond it went to the stage where it's like, you know, I'm the greatest around here. And when I really survey what's going on around me, I cannot draw any other conclusion but that. And oh, how disappointing that was, you know, for me to hear. Because sometimes we are teachers and preachers and we preach, you know, humility and we preach those things. But when it comes to us, we do not know how to humble ourselves. And let me tell you something, friends. We need to humble ourselves, okay? Because if God does it, we will not like it. <laughs> My granny would say, God love it, you wouldn't like it, right? If God has to do it, if he has to be the one to kind of clip our wings and bring us back to reality, 
because I do believe some people have gone beyond, beyond, right? So there we read in James 4, 6, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You know, God opposes the proud. He is not drawing nigh to those who are proud, but he gives grace to the humble, those who are lowly, you know, not low self-esteem, those who take the low seat, those who, you know, wait to be promoted instead of trying to promote themselves. There's a verse in Proverbs that says, don't praise yourself, let others do it. You know, don't let your own mouth praise you, let others do it. And that's how we see, you know, the difference sometimes between those who are very proud and arrogant and those who are really quite humble. Then we read here now in Proverbs 16, verse 18, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction and a heart and haughtiness before a fall. We have seen it. If we if we really observe around us, we see sometimes persons would just, you know, beat their chest, so to speak, you know, about who they are and who they think they are and who everybody else should think they are. Have you ever met someone and you would have maybe an exchange that is not so pleasant and then they would turn and say to you, do you know who I am? <laughs> you can always spot them. You know, I've interacted with persons like that before. I remember one particular uh, time there was a transaction that was happening uh, right here on my job, you know, in my, one of my former jobs. Here in the BVI, a transaction was happening between somebody who, I guess he had, you know, uh, told himself that he was the greatest, you know, among us. And he basically came to do a transaction that he considered very um, demeaning. It was beneath him. And he just gave us a hard time, even leading up to the day. When he had to come in and do what he had to do you know he considered it very beneath him and what it really was he was about to lose his property to the bank so somebody stepped in with like a lifeline to assist him and he felt that you know he just didn't need anybody's help but at the end of the day he could not find the funds to pay the bank and he refused to sign the papers you know it's like you know i don't need this and I remember saying to him, and I was, I was very courteous. I'm, I'm not asking. I know I was because I, I didn't know him like that. And you don't really, you know, deal with people uh, kind of funny at all, even sometimes when you know them. But I didn't know him, so I, I accorded him the best of courtesy. All right, so, you know, I gently explained you know why it was necessary to go ahead with the transaction that particular day because the deadline had even passed and he was being extended a period of grace so he was acting up during this grace and he refused and a part of me just became a little bit annoyed and i said to him sir if you do not sign these papers today the bank is going with your property and he looked me over from head to toe and he's like do you know who i am <laughs> and i was like i'm sorry sir i may not know who you are but all i do know is that if you don't sign this today that's it your property gone you know and you meet people like that as you go along you know life's way you meet people who are overly confident in themselves it's not just, you know, a confidence that's tempered with grace where you can even have a civil conversation with them. It's always about them, you know. But some, of, some people who are prideful and arrogant, they also tend to be a little bit narcissistic, right? They are all about themselves. It's all about me, 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 and everybody else can just take a back seat. And usually when you see folks that act up in this way, and you know go on really bad you know that destruction is looming something is coming that would humble them because you see friends if we are not able to detect unhealthy pride that's what i'll call it in ourselves 
then of course our creator knows exactly how to get us back in line you understand so it is it is on us to recognize that the lord resists the proud but he gives grace to the humble pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall all right so that's on that end of the spectrum now let's look at what confidence where you should get your confidence from all right where should you get your confidence when we read psalm 139 14 it simply says i will praise you and the psalmist is speaking to god i will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Friends, when you understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that should give you a sense of godly confidence. All right, your confidence should be in God, not in your stuff, not so much in your achievements where you take it beyond. It's okay, it's okay to feel that sense of pride. You know, you worked hard and you made some accomplishments. It's that's good. But when we take it overboard, right, that's the problem. So when you recognize that your confidence comes from the Lord because He's the one that made you he made you fearfully and wonderfully we were created in the image of god friends so that is why we should not be telling each other that you know you're ugly you're too dark you're too thin you're too fat you're this so we look for people's flaws and we point them out your nose is too big your lips are too broad listen Leave people with their broad lips, you hear? Because see people trying to inject Botox into their lips to get the kind of lips that people used to be teased about. Full lips, right? I, <laughs> there, listen, there are ways to refer to your, yourselves without being demeaning, okay? There are, there are people who look for the negative about people's uh, physical appearance. You know, him blackie, you know, growing up in Jamaica, people were so cruel. If, for example, a lady who had fair skin, which you call them browning, you know, hooked up with a man who is darker, they would be criticized. I wear the browning there, do it the ugly black man there. We have heard it all the time in our interactions where people are looked at according to their physical appearance. Some of us have defined beauty and we see beauty as outward. Anything that can be seen on the outside, that's considered beauty. So forget about the man's heart now. You know, they, they don't care about the type of heart that he has. Suppose this man is a loving, kind man. That's the man that the woman wants. She doesn't want a pretty boy who we consider that, you know, who is very arrogant, very bossy, very controlling, very manipulative. No, I'm not saying you don't have cute persons, as we put it, who have all the wonderful attributes. All right. I, I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But let us put the labels aside and look what's coming from inside of the person. Where should their confidence come from? It should come from how God has created them. It's a hard thing, a hard condition. Some pretty people, me tell you, y'all always hear me talk about bad-minded people, right? Some pretty people, bad mind, who we define as pretty. You know, in, in Jamaica where I grew up, if your hair was long and smooth or wavy or curly, you hear, oh, she have nice hair. And if somebody else's hair was, as we describe it, to be nappy, you know, look when I hear it dry. <laughs> Let me tell you, we're not nice, you know. We're not nice to each other, friends. We're not nice to each other at all. We look at the outward appearance and we are mean, we are cruel. But listen here, when you have confidence in God, when you have that trust in God and you know for a fact, 
that he made you fearfully and wonderfully. You walk around with your head held high, not in pride and arrogance, right? But with that sense of confidence, knowing exactly who you are. You know, sometimes persons who cannot be pushed around, they are called arrogant. You know, sometimes if you don't allow people to push you around or deal with you in a certain manner, you are considered arrogant. That's coming from folks who, who realize that they cannot just treat you anyhow. Listen, you should have that healthy dose of pride in yourself where you do not accept certain treatment from others, regardless of who they are. I always say respect goes both ways. Some people demand respect, but they have none to give because of their post or their position or their title. I know that post positions and titles come with honor. It comes with that place. And the Bible does say to give honor to whom honor is due. But listen here, you see respect? It's something that we have to give to each other. Regardless, a parent has to respect their, their child. And the children have to respect their parents. The Bible says to honor, you know, honor your parents because it is right. But I'm telling you, if a parent is being honored by a child, but that parent just berates and puts down and listen, it's just a matter of time before that child will start acting disrespectfully. It's just how it is because it's what they are learning. You understand? So we have to know, friends how we're going to conduct ourselves as we go along our journey with the Lord. Are we going to exercise godly confidence where we know who we are in God? We know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We can declare marvelous are your works, O Lord. Or are we going to walk around with our nose turned up because we think we're better than others because we may have a little bit more resources. We may have a fat bank account a house or a mansion on the hill you know drive around in a lovely vehicle you know so we treat others as if they're nobodies no friends no that is not becoming of any of us even those who are called christians this should not be found among us this type of pride and arrogance but let us just humble ourselves before the Lord so that he's the one that would elevate us. Listen, no elevation lasts more than the elevation that comes from God. No promotion lasts more than the one that comes from the Lord. So we do not have anything at all, friends, to worry about as it relates to, you know, how we're seen or how we're perceived. Listen, man looks at the outward, God looks at the heart, and he will promote your life, especially when you humble yourself. When we humble ourselves, when we allow the Lord to take the forefront of our lives. And then there's this other thing which I will call you know, false humility. Yes, it's that sense of, I am so humble and so, you know, but deep down, mm -mm. It's, it's just that front, that facade to give the impression that you're humble, but it's really that kind of thing that is still attracting that level of attention. You know, say, look at me, but if you really check it out, it's pride masking as humility. Sometimes you give people a compliment and you say, you know, you danced well today or you sang well today. And they're like, really? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying. Sometimes that is not humility. That is something else. You know, you should have that level of God, godly confidence where you can say, you know, thank you, you know, uh, to God be the glory. I really try my best. There's nothing wrong, friends, with accepting a compliment. It's just that if you're trying to steal God's glory now, then that's where the problem comes in. All right. So I just wanted to remind us today, friends, that it's okay to have godly confidence. I call it Godfidence. Godfidence right you can hold your head up uh to the extent where 
you're not too high to look look around and see those around you that may need some help some assistance instead of you know holding your head up so high with your nose so highly turned up that you cannot even see what's going on on the ground all right it's 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 times like that when you know you stumble because your head is so high up in the sky that you're not able to see what's going on below okay so friends i'm gonna pray now and just ask the lord to help us to be on the right part of the spectrum we don't want the extreme of pride you know this this arrogance and we don't want that extreme of low 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 self-esteem where that too is screaming i need help look at me we want to find ourselves somewhere in the middle where the Lord can get glory from our lives. He can use us. He knows that we're, we'll be able to handle the assignments that he gives us. We will not take his glory. Some people, as soon as they see the Lord start to use them, they become prideful. And they become the do you know who I am type. Right? We, we have to be careful about that. We have to be so careful about that. Can the Lord trust you with his assignments? Can he trust you with the gift of, for example, healing? Can the Lord trust you with that? If you pray for somebody and they get well, will the Lord get the glory from it? Or you will take the glory and say, I did that. It was I was the one that prayed for them and they recovered or it is my prayer that caused this or that let's be so careful friends let's be so careful let's also be so careful about even the way that we advertise or we announce you know those things that God did but we want it to look as if we're the ones that did it let's be so careful because you see the Lord doesn't really share his glory like that he wants us to remain humble. So if you see the Lord using you mightily in his service, give him, th give him thanks, give him the praise, give him the glory, give him the honor. That way you can ensure that he would continue using your life because he sees that you can handle it. Some people become famous because of what they're doing for God. Not that they asked for it, but it happens. Some can handle it. Some just can't. Some become, you know, what I call rogues. They just go about and start doing their own thing because they see the Lord using them. And remember now, the gifts of God are without repentance. And a lot of people are still flowing in these giftings, but they have lost the anointing. So let's be careful. All right, let's be careful. Let's be careful that we don't get to the point where we're just flowing from a point of giftedness, but there is no anointing falling. The, the anointing that breaks yokes. Some people look at a crowd as anointing. You know, this person must be anointed, anointed because there's a crowd. It could be that the crowd is following the gift. They're following those things that they're seeing happening. But when it really comes to them getting a breakthrough for themselves, there is none. It's just excitement and hype. Let's watch out for those things, friends. Let's check that. You know, when Jesus moved about, he did, he did his stuff so humbly. The scribes and the Pharisees did not like him for it. You know, they would always seek for ways that they could kill him. And when Jesus perceived it, he would just remove himself from their midst. But he went about so humbly, healing people, feeding them, both spiritually and physically. Jesus, if we use his example as our model, we're going to be all right. We're going to be on the right track. All right. He was humble. He was lowly. They expected a king to come from some palace. But he was born in a lowly estate. So because of that, some rejected him. So friends... Even in your humility, and I'm talking about that, you know, sound humility now, godly humility. You may not get accolades. You may not get the lights and the camera and the action. But just know that God would be pleased with your life. It's okay to want to be behind the scenes. I have some friends like that. I, I cannot 
open my mouth to even thank them for anything right because they just and it and that's not even false humility they just don't like the spotlight they don't like all of that you know acknowledgement stuff you have some people if they help out in the church and pastor forget to thank them i call the name lord jesus them now do not not church again them done because they expected you know it's okay to be thankful and to be grateful i'm not saying that you know something is done and people should be ungrateful no but just in case they forgot to call your name lord you stop through offering and you know i'm paying the tithes and <laughs> i'm just saying friends let's keep the thing real it's true man you know pastor forget to thank us personally call our name a team worked on something and maybe he may thank the team leader and the team but no you want him thank the team leader mary jane sue john jill jane jackie no no friends don't get upset because you are sometimes overlooked some people say but they do it all the time you know you see that's the devil the devil wants you to become so distracted he uses any and everything and that should say to us if we are finding that we are you know that's our attitude then something inside of us got to go like seriously something inside of us got to go learn to celebrate yourself again not in a prideful way but learn to celebrate you know yourself don't you don't have to always wait for others to celebrate you and if they don't then you're down in the dumps come on the Lord wants us to have confidence and godly confidence. He doesn't want us to be, you know, boxed about by people's treatment of us. So if they don't, you know, treat you the way that you, you think, like, like in that example, giving of thanks and gratefulness, then you feel like you're a nobody. No, no friends. All right. Let us grow up in God. Let's come off the milk and get on some hard food there are some things that are gonna come your way you're not going to like it I'm, I'm telling you 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 some of you know that you're not going to like it but our response is what really tells the type of people that we are our response to adversity our response to you know ungratefulness how many people have you helped and they never even wait lord jesus some of you gonna kick me off here with all this jamaican my granny used to say them never even turned the black of them yeah if you said thanks <laughs> right but you have to move on you have to go on you cannot stop even being generous because somebody was ungrateful remember i'm not saying they have a license to be ungrateful i'm just saying if your motives are right you will not be so affected by things like that yes everybody likes to you know feel appreciated and so on but i'm saying when you're giving with the right motives you're not gonna become so affected if somebody is not grateful you're not gonna shut down all right that's even another topic but i'm just saying all of this stemming from you know the difference between godly confidence and pride and arrogance let us walk in the way that the Lord wants us to walk. Let us be humble. All right? Humble ourselves under the hand of God and He will exalt us in due season. Let's not push the envelope before time. Let's not try to do anything or get in any post or position before the time. Let the Lord elevate. Let the Lord promote. The Bible declares that promotion comes not from the east nor the west. Listen here, friends. When the Lord is ready to elevate you, no man can stop it. When the Lord opens those doors for you, no man can shut them. I'm telling you, some of you could testify about this, that the Lord opens doors and nobody. So let them fight you. Let them try to keep you down. I've seen it. I've seen organizations where somebody just always try to keep this one person down all the time. They skip them for opportunities. They're overlooked. But when the time came for elevation, nobody could stop it. Why? Because instead of complaining, they just, you know, take the licking and kept on ticking. 
and in due season the Lord elevated them brought them from the back of the line straight to the front those are the kind of things that God does for people who are humble for people who say you know God my trust is in you my confidence is in you the Lord works miracles for his people all right so yes develop that godly confidence godfidence right that's right miss wani <laughs> i just looked and saw that godfidence with graceful humility in jesus name that's it all right give god the glory give him the glory for everything give him the glory and watch him elevate your life all right let's pray father i thank you today i bless your holy name lord i thank you for your love and your mercy towards us lord when we think about your goodness our soul cries out hallelujah lord when we think about the way that you love us our soul just prays your holy name oh god because we realize that you love us with an everlasting love your love for us oh god is unfailing so we have absolutely nothing to fear fear of man fear of not being given opportunities fear of this fear of that lord you have called us to be humble because your word declares that you resist the proud but you give grace to those who are humble help us oh god to humble ourselves help us father to recognize areas in our lives that may not be pleasing to you regarding this matter help us oh god that each time we feel as if or we're, we're tempted to become prideful and arrogant help us father to just humble ourselves teach us how to do it god teach us how to humble ourselves let your holy spirit guide us and direct us oh god especially when we're going off the path that you have set for us help us to accept your assignments with humility and with grace and to always remember to give you the glory when you use our lives, O oh God, to accomplish great things. Help us not to become puffed up because you're using us, O oh God, but to stay low, stay humble, and you would continue to give grace to us. Father, bless your people today. Anyone that's struggling with low self-esteem, Lord, help them to understand that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And Lord, you have given us this wonderful gift of life. Your word declares that you have given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So we can rise above that low self-esteem, those negative voices that told us that we would never be anything. Lord, in you we can be great. So help your people, O oh God, to rise up from those negative voices and negative opinions that others have of them. Help your people, Father. Lord, those who are prideful and arrogant, Lord, teach, teach us, teach us to humble ourselves, O oh God. Help us to humble ourselves under your almighty hand. My God, today, God, let this be a turning point in our lives. Let it be the day when we can honestly evaluate our lives and say, yes, I have been a bit prideful. Help me, Father. Or yes, I have been allowing others to treat me a certain way because of low self-esteem. Help me, Father. Lord, help us to see ourselves the way you see us. Oh God, help us today. Help us today, God. Do for us more than we can ask or think. Do for us, oh God, more than we can ask or even think. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friends, you hang in there with God. Do not let anything or anyone push you off course or to push you into this level or area that the Lord would not be pleased. You know, let's stay humble. 
and watch the Lord elevate our lives in due season. All right? There are some specific things that comes to your life as a result of your humility. Let it be that that continues to flow through your life. All right? Do not let the Lord, you know, have to come and <laughs> whip, whip, whip us back. Let us not let the Lord have to come and whip us back into shape because we're bent out of shape or we're going in the direction that he did not plan for us. Okay? Hold your head up, but hold it up in God. Do not allow anybody to put you down or deal with you anyhow or treat you any old way. Some people say, well, that's what humility is. You know, you just be a floor mat. No, 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 not at all. Remember, meekness does not mean weakness, okay? It doesn't mean that you're going to put everybody in the place who try to step on you. But there's a way that we go about things where we can let people know in a nice way. Those who I guess, you know, you could communicate with nicely because some people don't understand. And you let them know, no, I will not accept such behavior. No, I will not accept any disrespect from you. And you let them know that categorically, no. Respect me, I'll respect you. Treat me right. All right, and you can expect reciprocation because there are people who want to just deal with people anyhow. I've seen some pastors talk down to their members as if they're nobodies, but at the same time demand respect. That's one of the things I admire about the leaders that the Lord has blessed me with. They love people. They respect people. They give us the word. They teach us. They correct us. You know, they, they love people and they respect people. So it's so easy. I tell people all the time, my husband and I, I'm wrapping up now, but I'm just saying this before I go. My husband and I, this year will make 18 years that we're married. He's of a different personality. I'm the more outgoing one. He's more on the quiet side. I'm the extrovert. He's the introvert. Well, he's coming out of that now. You can't live with an extra, uh, extrovert for 18 years and remain an introvert. I, I don't know. Part, there are parts of him that's still introverted, but what I'm saying, you know, we can influence one another. And one of the things that we realized from early is that if our relationship, if our marital relationship was going to work, there had to be mutual love and respect mutual i can't treat my husband any old way because i'm the more you know out there one it's like i, I i've said and i think i said this even at a marriage seminar one time a lot of wives treat their husband like little boys and then expect them to be men no respect is due it doesn't matter who earning more again not a topic let me leave that alone i'm just saying friends you have to know that respect is a mutual thing it's it's breaking up a lot of relationships not just marriage because you heard me mention that i've seen even some pastors deal with their members in certain ways some of them are good arrogant themselves and they just don't deal with people the right way but they expect it no lead by example show the people that you know what respect is deal with people kindly and gently and watch and see if the response would not be different some people are shocked at the way that you respond to them without understanding you're actually following their example you're 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 looking at their life as leaders and that's what you see and you tend to pattern what you see your leaders do whether it's children or adults it's true so some things are just not kosher, okay? It's not okay, so don't do it. And then those you lead will do better. Some say, who know better, do better. But if you constantly seeing, you know, that kind of behavior, one, it's just a matter of time before you start to pattern it. Even as an adult, I'm just saying, all right? So let's allow the Lord to humble, keep us humble, not humble us because, hey, if he does it, we're in trouble. 
So let's humble ourselves. Let's ask him to teach us how. And once we follow what God says, we'll be all right. All right, friends. So it was really good sharing with you again today. You know, all of you are here. You know, here it is, the usual suspects. I give God thanks for you. I pray for you. I bless the Lord for you because just as how, you know, you say, some of you have been giving feedback that what I'm doing is a source of encouragement to you. You encourage me as well. Yes, you do. There are times when, you know, uh, even in the messages, you encourage me. And I, I thank God for that. And I thank God for you. So you be blessed. You be blessed. And know that everything, the Lord does not make mistakes, okay? He's the one that has given people divine connections. Connecting with people who can strengthen them. Iron sharpens iron. You know some stuff that you share with me. And I know some stuff that I share with you. And together that exchange brings God glory. And that's what we're about. Alright, so until next time my friends, yes. Until next time, please take care.